Okay, let's go ahead and begin with you drawing this picture. It is not in the T-notes fashion yet, however, it is important for you to be able to see this. So go ahead and take a moment, pause the video, and record and draw this picture. Okay, so today we are beginning notes on photosynthesis. And what you're looking at is a pictorial representation of what photosynthesis is. So as you can see, everything on the left that is in blue are all called reactants, and photosynthesis is merely sunlight energy, carbon dioxide, and water entering the plant in order to create sugar, which is what the plant needs in order to grow, in order to reproduce, in order to live and also oxygen as a byproduct, it's, it's waste. And notice that these are called reactants, and over here on the right side, these are called products. Also note that my arrows go in to specific places, and this is to help you to remember how the reactants go into the plant. Sunlight energy goes in through the leaves, CO2 also goes in through the leaves, water goes in through the roots and you'll also notice that the oxygen, the arrow coming out, um, comes out from the leaf and this arrow is a little misleading. It says it comes out, however, we know that the plant makes this and keeps it and uses it. So even though the arrow is coming out, it's just to show that it creates it, but it does keep it within the plant itself. Now, photosynthesis is how plants make their own food, also known as glucose or sugar, and also creates oxygen by using water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight. This whole process occurs in chloroplasts, and chloroplasts are found in the leaves. If you look at this picture, you can see that in the leaf, there are many, 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 many of these chloroplasts which trap the light. And this is where all of the photosynthesis occurs. And there's many little factories in every single leaf. And you know that there's a lot of leaves on plants. So there's a lot of photosynthesis occurring. Here is a picture showing the leaf. And if you go into a view that is microscopic, you can actually see, using a microscope, the little chloroplasts inside of the cell. And if you look down here, this is another representation showing you the parts. So chloroplasts are these green bodies right here. And here you have the cell wall, and you have this place called the vacuole, which is where they store things. And the nucleus is kind of like the brain or the central system of the entire plant cell. The chemical equation for photosynthesis is that in order to have photosynthesis, you need to have six carbon dioxides, six waters, and you also need some, some light energy from the sun. These are called reactants. When you have these together in the chloroplast with light, you can produce C6H12O6, which is also known as glucose, which is the sugar that the plant wants to make for itself. And it also produces a gas, and they create six molecules of the oxygen element. And these are called products. Now, what is a reactant? A reactant is pretty much any element or compound that goes into a reaction. Notice that it is on the left side of the equation. Products are the elements or compounds that are produced from a reaction, and those are always located on the right side. Notice that it takes all of these in order to make just one sugar, and it produces some waste, which is six oxygen. So it takes a lot in order to just make one sugar. Now, how is carbon dioxide captured? If you guessed stomata, stoma meaning mouth, which looks like it opens and closes, which it does, um, you are correct. So a stomata is merely an opening that is found on the bottom side of the leaf. And when it's open, it lets in 
carbon dioxide or out oxygen um, as it needs to. And this is also the same place where water is lost through transpiration. Here's a picture of um, CO2 go coming in and water and oxygen going out. And notice that this is the top part of the leaf and this is the bottom and that the stomata are at the bottom. And this will help to keep transpiration at its lowest because if it were at the top, there would be a lot more transpiration occurring. Here are some up-close pictures of stomata. Um, they look kind of scary, don't they? <laughs> but notice that they're open in these ones over here. Yep, they all look pretty open in the yellow picture down below. And over on the top green one, um, they look slightly open, but remember when they're closed, they're still allowing some gas ex exchange, so there's always a little bit of loss of, for example, water. Now, how is light captured? This is a great question. Chlorophyll, which is found in chloroplasts, which are found in leaves. So remember the picture down below that inside of the leaf there are many, 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 many chloroplasts, which are these little factories that make photosynthesis happen, where photosynthesis is occurring. Chlorophyll is is a pigment, it's a color that's inside chloroplasts. And what it does is it catches the light and it changes it into something called ATP, which is a chemical energy that um, that will allow the plant to do what it needs to do, okay? And what are some of the things that it needs to do? It needs to transport water up and down the plant. What does that? ATP, okay? Um, what even makes the process photosynthesis happen? ATP, which is kind of weird. It takes ATP to make sugar that makes ATP. Pretty cool. Now, what does the plant do with the food that it makes? Well, it lives. In order to do photosynthesis, it needs to have food. It needs to grow, it needs to reproduce. And when we say reproduction, it needs to have little babies and its babies are its seeds. And in order to make its seeds, it needs to have flowers and pollen. And the fourth thing that it does is that it stores its food because you never know when you're going to need it and, um, and maybe the sun might not be around for you to do photosynthesis. So you might need to have some food just in case um, you can't do photosynthesis. Now, it also supports the plant, which means that there's cellulose in the cell wall, which makes the plant able to stand up. And if it can stand up, then it can get to more sun and it can make sure that it can continue its photosynthesis. Okay, so we're at the end, and hopefully if you understood everything, great. If not, feel free to review the video.